Welcome to the High Income Business Writing Podcast, helping you propel your writing business to a whole new level. And now, here's your host, Ed Gandia. Hey there, thank you for joining me for episode 132 of the High Income Business Writing Podcast. My name is Ed Gandia, and this is the podcast for business writers and copywriters who want to take their writing businesses to the six figure level or the part time equivalent. Just a quick reminder that you can find detailed show notes to this episode by going to b2blauncher.com forward slash episode 132. I really believe that all of us are born with a great sense of wonder, courage, and boldness. As toddlers, if, if you have kids, if you have grandkids, if you know people who have little kids, you can see it. You can see that they have tremendous curiosity. And they're not afraid to explore and to express their creative spirit. But somewhere along the way, fear begins to rule our lives. Fear of looking stupid, fear of rejection, fear of criticism, fear of failing. And we begin to lose our confidence. We stop taking chances. We start playing small. At times, we might even start to feel like a fraud. Fortunately, there are many things we can do to turn this tide and to regain our confidence. And one of them is to get into the habit of doing more of what scares us. And in this episode, you're going to hear from writer and copywriter Leilani Haywood. And she is going to explain how she deliberately does things that scare her in order to grow personally and professionally. And she's going to talk about how this practice has enabled her to launch and grow, which become a thriving freelance business. So I think you're going to enjoy this conversation, whether you struggle with this on a frequent basis or whether fear just kind of rears its ugly head as it does for so many of us. I think you're going to walk away with some, not just encouragement, but with some actionable advice on what you can do to counter the effects that fear has in your business. Without further ado, please enjoy my conversation with Leilani Haywood. Leilani, good to have you on the show. Welcome. Thank you, Ed, for having me. It's a pleasure to have you on, and I'm excited to talk to you about this topic and to hear more about your story. But as usual, I, I always like to ask my guests to give us a little bit of, of background so we have some context for our discussion. So tell us about yourself, the work you do, the types of clients you work with, and, and so on. Sure. Well, I own Haywood Marketing and Communications. And it's a boutique editorial social media copywriting company. And right now I have um, several nonprofits where I do all of their copywriting, a fi financial services company, a publishing company where I manage their online magazine, and a couple body shops that um, need social media content and are in a local restaurant. And so... I, um, I have got a variety of companies and um, where I do, you know, different types of copywriting. And then I also will take in, take on some other projects to fill in, um, you know, when times are slow and that sort of thing. So good variety there. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's a pretty good, good variety. Now I'm curious, how long have you been freelancing? How long have you been doing this, this kind of work? Well, I actually started like a hundred years ago when I was in college. I was taking a magazine magazine writing class in um, my journalism school, and so my magazine professor challenged us to write some query letters to mag to magazines because she said that she had one of her students land a Rolling Stone assignment just like completely, you know, randomly out of the blue. And so I went on spring break. I took the writer's market, which is, which was like this huge book, this directory of all these publications, took it by the pool and wrote some query letters. I wrote about 
10 query letters and I landed two assignments out of that batch. And so I started, I guess I kind of started on the side um, years ago and through all the different jobs that I had, I, I always had, you know, I was always freelancing for the local um, business newspaper or magazines or um, businesses, my friends that own businesses that needed a brochure, uh, you know, they needed a copy written for a brochure or a press release. So kind of always did that on the side for about over 20 years. Wow. Okay. So you had a day job and you just did this as a, as a side thing, uh, for yes. friends, people who just kind of came to you who needed help. Yes. Yes. And so that was, yeah, making that leap was just, uh, it, it was scary. It was kind of like jumping off a mountain cliff. And so I'm curious in terms of what, what work did you do in your day job? So it, 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 what kind of work did you do all those years you were freelancing on the side? I, um, I, well, I started out as a newspaper, newspaper reporter and then um, covering politics. And I shifted into public relations and then into script writing where I wrote scripts for video productions. And then I went and worked for an edit editorial company, just like um, uh, basically looking for potential authors, like an acquisitions editor type mm -hmm. of position. And, um, and then, yeah, I did, you know, I worked, I worked at a university for an, their information technology division. And um, so did, yeah, just kind of, uh, did different things, but it all had the writing in common. But, you know, we always have the addition of PR, marketing, and um, I even did a stint at an insurance company where I was their copywriter, which was uh, super boring. <laughs> but, um, you know, it's like every, every position that I took in these different companies would open a door that I did, totally did not expect in um, freelance writing. That's very cool because he had some. So you you got some very relevant experience that you could then leverage either on the side or or later on. Right, right. Like I I worked as an editor for a telecommunications. Um, it was a telecommunications online magazine, and I had no idea when I started working on writing articles for like telecommunications, wireless, um, you know, the computing technology world. How um. How, uh, how actually that is you're positioning yourself for some very lucrative, lucrative assignments. I mean, I got, I remember when I got my first um, magazine assignment for a telecom magazine, that was a dollar a word. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so like, really? Wow. <laughs> Somebody should have told me this early on. <laughs> <laughs> well, let, let's talk about your transition. So why did you decide to then go out on your own? I mean, it sounds like you enjoyed the work, but that is a big leap, as you mentioned earlier. So what, what yes. went on or what motivated you to, to make that leap? It was a combination of circumstances where I have a daughter with special needs who, you know, I need to have a more flexible schedule for her. Mm -hmm. And then I was also around that time where, where, uh, you know, she was, she was needing me more. I was working for an ad agency as the, I was the only copywriter for this ad agency. He put me on a team to, uh, create a product called internet content management. And so he put me through a boot camp to learn everything about social media, which, you know, when Facebook was just getting started. And so I went um, through eight weeks of learning every aspect of social media and blogging and putting together a product for our clients. And so right around that point in time, I just got this aha idea like, you know what, May I wonder if there's some small to medium sized businesses that would, um, you know, that would want these services at a more affordable price. And so that's when I, I started like brainstorming, talking to, to some of my friends who were very successful entrepreneurs, bouncing the idea off of them and, um, 
making making the leap. And so it was a combination of opportunity, which now in retrospect, I thank the ad agency that he provided the training. I got the idea while I was going through his training and um, made the leap. That's great. And the, the timing was just right, too, in terms of social media, because I'm assuming this is like late 2000s. Right. 2008, 2009, it sounds like. Yes, yes, yes. Late 2008, 2009. And um, and so right around that time, I was all I was offered a contract with a major financial services firm that I've done consulting for um, where, you know, writing digital content for their software products. So it, it all just like happened at the same time where. This company called me and said, hey, we want to hire you to help us with copywriting for this project, and we're going to pay you a great rate. You can work at home. And so I took that as my way out to uh, launch my business. And how did that client come about? That they Was that from somebody you knew? or Yes, yes. Actually, they were a um, my colleague at this telecommunications online magazine. We worked together for the same company. And so, yeah, she just reached out to me out of the blue. She knew what my skill set was, and we had worked together and um, said, hey, you know, we had this project, and, and uh, are you interested? I'm like, get me out of here. <laughs> yes. So, and, and she knew, she knew that uh, you were on your way out, I'm assuming. She actually, she didn't know that. Oh, okay. She didn't know. Yeah. She didn't know I was on my way out. So and, this um, is pure luck. Yes. Yes. <laughs> pure luck. All right. So, so this is great because it sounds like this was uh, what carried you over, right? Most people in your situation, um, they have to really hustle. For they some do. clients, right? You had yes. kind of an anchor client that kind of uh, financed that transition, it sounds like. Yes, yes. that I, I like that. I like the way you said that. Yes, I had an anchor client that financed the transition where, you know, I would put in uh, 20 hours, 20, 30 hours on their project, spend 10 hours building my business to where, where at the end of that contract, my business took over. So... It was it was a great situation. Yeah, and then when, once that it, once it was over, then you had no problems um, in terms of transitioning to to other clients then, and, and making sure your income was stable. Yes, yes, because the way um, you know, based it was basically social media that launched writing content for social media. You know, their websites, their blogs on a recurring basis. So I, I created this package to where it's like a monthly recurring, you know, like a retainer fee yeah. every month. So I have like this monthly income that I can count on. And, um, and so, and then when the months, you know, and then some clients roll off and when they roll off, then, then I, uh, look for some other freelance work. Excellent. Excellent. Okay. Well, that, that, that makes sense. And you know, those were difficult times too, 2008, 2009, but it sounds like, you know, because social media was picking up in a big way, you were at the right place at the right time kind of thing. Right. Right. And it was right around the time when a lot of, um, some companies were, were, they were outsourcing their marketing or yeah. outsourcing, you know, their copywriting because of the economy. And so that actually worked for me. <laughs> now, one of the things that that um, you and I were discussing offline and, and kind of the, the, the main topic of our call today is not just, you know, how, how did you transition, but really, more importantly, this idea of doing what scares you. And yes. you know, you've shared with me that doing what scares you has been a key ingredient to your success. And I'm curious to know, why do you feel this is important? And, and maybe you can share some examples on how you've used fear as a tool to grow your business. Yes. Yes. Well, one of the things that I, you know, I didn't realize how fearful I was until I started walking down this path. And one of the things that I absolutely, that like freaks me out. I don't know if anybody else is scared of doing this, but it's, you know, it's talking to strangers 
and it's getting up in front of people and talking about what you do and what you can offer them. I know some of my friends, they really enjoy that. And, but to me, it's kind of, it's like having a root canal. And so my friend, one of my friends, uh, when I was launching my business, he said, what you need to do, you need to do a presentation to this group of business owners in this area of the city, of the city I live in, where there's not a lot of people doing social media. And so he said, I know they're looking for speakers Here's, you know, call this person and book yourself as a speaker and do a presentation to this group that's brand new of business owners. And so I put together a presentation and and I I think it was like why your business should be on Facebook. You know, it was just Mm -hmm. like very simple five reasons why your business should be on Facebook. And at the end of that presentation, I had 10 appointments And those 10 appointments, half of them became clients. And so that business group launched my social media side of the business because I did, I basically, I broke out of my own comfort zone to do uh, public public speaking and talk to people, you know, that I didn't know. And, And I found, and I actually ended up doing more presentations in front of this group. And so... The fear of talking to people, um, the fear of like asking, you know, where you, when you think uh, that your rate is going to be too high mm-hmm. or like this package, you know, you create this package for them. And, um, and I remember just having to stand in front of the mirror and say this certain amount that I wanted, you know, like several times because I was too afraid to ask for that. And then I asked for it and it's like, Okay. And I'm like, oh, this is not a big deal, you know? So, um, so now that that became your new normal at that point, right? It's like, okay, yes. next time I won't be as scared asking it. Right, right, right. And, um, so like talking to, uh, strange people, networking, I had to break that fear of, you know, walking into a networking event where I don't know anybody and, um, do, and, you know, just, talking to people. That is like a fear that I had to break of, um, just walking into a room. I mean, it could be so intimidating, uh, which is crazy. Cause I mean, as a journalist, you have to ask people questions all the time that they don't want to answer. And strangers and, at that. And strangers, right. <laughs> strangers that are in power. And, um, And so I would just kind of like shift into this persona. I mean, I wasn't being fake, but um, where I really wanted to know, you know, know about like this business owner's background or, you know, I I would, my purpose would be to connect with one, with a couple people and it worked. And um, so now I enjoy networking and I'm not afraid to ask for what I believe I'm worth. And, um, and to negotiate, you know, um, ask more details about a particular project, which I found, unfortunately, it seems like it may or maybe it's my clients, you know, um, a lot of a lot of freelancers don't ask for certain details. Like this, there's this one prospect that I had and he was surprised that I was asking him all these questions. And um, and I'm like and I'm thinking I guess I'm just assuming that every freelancer would want to know these different things about the project. And so mm-hmm. I think it's like bringing that marketing background, that PR background to um, the copy, you know, and and so I have found that to be really beneficial. But, yeah, it's been it's been a scary, scary, the scariest thing that I've ever done in my life. <laughs> meaning going out on your own and, and building and growing a business. Yes, yes. And um, adjusting to shifting priorities, you know, like um, when you lose a client and what are you going to do? And, um, you know, just the constant flux and the constant change. And And one of the things I wanted to say about like talking to Another fear that I had was talking on the phone. I don't know how many people have that fear, but what I did early on well, in my Well, first business, of all, I got a quick question for you. Why, why was that a fear? Because 
in, in your regular day job, I'm sure you have to do a lot of that. Yeah, but I think maybe because, um, especially when I was when uh, prospecting on the phone. Um, oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. The fear of prospecting on the phone. Okay. And um, and so what I started, what I did early on is I would keep a spreadsheet of prospects, and I would, you know, set aside one to two hours every week and just make phone calls or try to set up appointments. And so this was something that I've seen in like some of my other friends who had uh, freelance um, businesses, like, you know, uh, building websites. So it was a weakness that I saw in one of my friends who built websites. He would tell me, you know, that he uh, did it. This was famine month. And I'm like, well, what are you doing to try to get new clients? And so I have seen that as a weakness and some of my freelance freelancer friends. And I have tried to work on that weakness myself, which is why I started listening to you a year ago, Ed. <laughs> ah, great. <laughs> great. No, it's, yeah. uh, yes. Do, do what you fear. And, and, you know, I'm curious when you started, maybe it was early on, but I, I, I shouldn't assume when did you start realizing that doing these things that were obviously scary? When did you realize that, you know what, this is good for me. It, it's I'm, I'm creating uh, scar tissue, if you will, that's making sure. me stronger. You know, I think for me, it was when after I did that presentation and had 10 appointments, when, I, when people, you know, came, they like crowded me wanting my time. And I, I was like, you know what, that was, this is, this was worth me stepping out, spending you know, 10, 20 hours creating that presentation and doing all the research for that group, um, you know, because this helped them and, and, and it created a biz, you know, built my business. And so that was when I, I was, you know, I, I was like, I have got to get out of my own way. And um, one of my first clients, I learned a lot from him. He owns a body shop He's an amazing marketer and, um, he, yeah, he really stretched me. I learned a lot from him about like networking cause he was very involved in the community and, um, you know, creating a relationship with your customers and staying with them, even though, even when the times when they're not a customer, you know, but just building that relationship, that friendship. And so that's when, I, when I built that, when I uh, shifted into, you know what, this is not just a prospect, this is not a client, this is a friend. And so I think that makes a huge difference is when they, your um, client turns into a friend. Oh, yeah. And yeah. And, and so taking that step out of your comfort zone to uh, find this person, I mean, it's, it's so worth it in the long run because you know, this person has been like invaluable. I mean, very, very invaluable over the last five years. I'm, I'm curious, what things do you do on a regular basis to continue pushing yourself out of your comfort zone? Are there things, little things that you do or uh, even they don't have to be little, but things that you, it sounds like you're mindful about this. And I'm curious what what you continue to do to make sure that that bar is set pretty high, that you don't get too comfortable? Well, I mean, I listen to you, <laughs> to your podcast. And actually, I think your podcast that you did yesterday on nurturing leads was like amazing. And so I, you know, I mean, just this morning, I resurrected my email newsletter. I mean, I hate to say that I haven't done, done one in like five years and so after listening to your podcast yesterday, I started going through my, um, my uh, list of contacts out of LinkedIn. I, I had already exported all of my contacts out of, out of uh, LinkedIn and imported it into my um, email newsletter software. And so I'm starting to do that again. And then I also will do things to, uh, like an example is I, 
I, uh, I had a post on Facebook for one of my clients. And so I turned that post into an article to serve that client. And so I did that kind of like to stretch myself for them and um, to, to, to uh, position them as, as a content provider in their space. And, mm-hmm. um, and so I'll try to, I, you know, I'll think of something like once a week or, um, while I'm listening to you or Ray Edwards or um, there's another uh, couple other podcasts that I listen to. And we'll just try to uh, implement an idea every week to um, build my business or to help my client increase their business. I hope that makes sense. Yeah, yeah. So it sounds like I'm hearing a combination of things. Some of them are not necessarily things that are scary uh, and outside of your comfort zone. Sometimes it's just being mindful on a weekly or regular basis about working on your business and not necessarily in your business. That that's what I gather from exactly, that. exactly working on your business. And the whole email newsletter thing to me is frankly scary. <laughs> I mean, it may not be scary to you, but it's kind of scary to me because I'm like, what if these people think I suck? You know, what if they don't opt in? What if yes. you know all the what ifs? Yeah. So it's a combination, <laughs> right? It's a it's a how can I work? Um, being mindful about working on your business at least for a little bit every week. And then some of those things will mean getting out of your comfort zone. I, I, I totally get it. It's a, yeah. you put work out there and it's that fear of, you know, I'm not good enough. What if, what if this, or what if that? Um, and I suspect based on what you've shared with me, maybe that's one reason why you, you stopped doing it. You know, maybe you got busy, but there were all these other things in the background. Right. Exactly. I just got inundated by yeah. work. And so the whole email newsletter just fell to the wayside, even though I had a pretty high open rate. And um, yeah. And so I'm trying, because I do read other email new- newsletters, I'm thinking after what I listened to on your podcast yesterday that I need to do this because I, you know, I write email newsletters for my clients that get high open rates. And so why am I not doing this for myself? Yeah, I I should tell you this and for everyone listening, because um, most freelancers don't know this. They think that they're the only ones who feel this way. Most freelancers feel that their stuff is not good enough. Right. um, And that something's wrong with them because they can do this for their clients, but not for themselves. And I should tell you that it's really, really hard to write your own stuff or about yourself. So there's nothing wrong with you or with anybody listening who feels that way. It's actually very normal, um, which, by the way, I think there is some value in having a colleague uh, maybe help you uh, do some of your own copy or your own messaging. If you can maybe work out a reciprocal arrangement because it's so difficult. You're too close to your own stuff. It right. It doesn't mean you're a bad marketer. Okay. Okay. Good. That's good to know. Yeah. Yeah. So um, the other thing is, you know, it's just uh, the elephant in the room, right? Just by being here um, and volunteering to to come on the show. I'm sure that took a little bit of, of, of nerve, too, from what you shared with me offline. Oh my gosh, I, it freaked me out. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're doing great. Completely freaked me out. Yeah, but I told my friends I have to do this. <laughs> yeah, no, that and that's good. So, you know, what I'm hearing is many times it's not so much about what will I get out of it as a direct result of doing that scary thing. So, uh, for instance, let's just go back to your talk that you delivered a few years ago. Now, that was a classic case of you got some get great immediate benefit from it in terms of work. But many times the real value is the fact that you've stretched the boundaries of your, your comfort zone. And um, because you stepped outside of it. So now that, that the boundaries are are further out there in, in you're growing as a person and as a professional, and that can lead to many more things than just getting five clients as, as great as that is. Right, right, right. It's true. Love it. Love it. Um, I'm curious in terms of um, when you look ahead for your business, uh, 
What do you hope to accomplish uh, over the next, let's say, two or three years? Because I can tell you're into, you know, self improvement, professional development. You know, where are you looking to go? Well, I think I would like to do uh, more training and setting strategy instead of doing the work myself. And so I, I've stepped out and I, I've done that this, the last six months where I've done social media training with some clients and I actually enjoy doing that. And so there is one client that it's a real estate company where I did an analysis of their social media footprint and gave them a plan, you know, on how they could, uh, take advantage of their existing relationships, increase their footprint, um, you know, get more engagement. And so I, I put together this overall plan and then put together a training uh, for them, for their staff. And so I would like to shift more into doing that, into um, helping clients uh, put together strategy for their business and then train their people on how to do it instead of me doing it and then focusing, you know, shifting more into uh, writing, doing a lot more editorial, which is what that's my first love is editorial. And, um, and so I, right now I've, I'm editing an ebook for a client. I've got a freelance client where I'm also editing a bio for somebody and so I enjoy doing those sorts of things and getting out of, you know, maybe doing bigger uh, writing projects and uh, maybe and and shifting into where 10 hours a week I'm doing just strategy and training, social media training for companies. That sounds exciting. That sounds like a great mix too. Yeah. Now, I'm curious to know about your, that client where you're doing the strategy and the training. Um, are you, how did you get, was that an existing client or did they hire you for that piece specifically as their first engagement? They hired me for that piece and it came from that little business group that I did, a, that I was doing presentations for. Um, he, the real, the real estate agent was in that group and he recommended me to the owner of the company because he knew that they needed to beef up their social media presence and they needed to bring in someone to, uh, you know, give them an idea roadmap on where to go as a company. And so that, and then I also, um, spoke at a conference and, and, uh, uh, got a couple clients where I had never done remote training. One of my clients, I did remote training with him on, you know, showing him how to use Instagram and LinkedIn and Facebook and Twitter to, uh, YouTube to boost his business. And so, and it was, you know, it was like an hour a week and was not that hard and, uh, it was pretty lucrative. <laughs> now, it sounds like you um, have put packages together for this stuff instead of charging by the hour. Yes, yes, for, yes. I um, have always put together packages and, and uh, like, because I have my nonprofit clients, I manage their social media, their website, and I write copy for their email newsletter. And so that's all like, you know, a set rate. And, um, and, uh, so for the freelance writing, like the ebook, I, you know, I, I did, I bidded that on an hourly basis based on the market rate. So it did, but you know, most, I'd say about 90%, 90% of my business is like retainer yeah. based. Yeah. Retainer based on, um, you know, kind of a productized deliverable and that you package it. Um, right. Like this training and assessment and recommendations. It sounds like you came up with a package. Um, and I'm curious, how, how did you, obviously you're doing some of this kind of work already, but how did you come up with, with the, um, not just the, the scope of work, but also the, the pricing because that, that, that's kind of nerve wracking too. Yes. Yes. That is nerve wracking. I, um, well, I got input from the client on what they needed. And then basically, I mean, I just Googled what people were charging in my area mm -hmm. to do, you know, to provide that service. And, um, 
and then just, uh, yeah, I mean, you know, compared my rate to, to X, Y, Z, um, training company and, uh, and adjusted my rate accordingly. Cause it's just me and, be, and I was going on site to their company and, and, uh, that's how I came up with it. That's with great. Rate. And yeah. now you have a template, right? So you, you can, like you said, you can do more of this cause this is a repeatable thing. I'm sure you'll adjust some, some items, but, um, you could do this again for others. Yes. Yes, I could. That's a good idea, Ed. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's, I need, I should get you to coach me, man. Well, you know, you know what I, what I found <laughs> is that it's the first time you do it. It takes the longest cause you're doing it from scratch. And, uh, but after that, you can kind of templatize and, you know, you, you, know, you kind of codify it. And, right. um, every time you do it again, it becomes easier and more efficient because the template, the framework is there. Now you're just d- dealing with different inputs. Yeah, that's, that's good. So it becomes almost essential that you do it again because you're, you'll make more, uh, every time you do it. Right, right. That's excellent. And I actually enjoy doing that, yeah. Well, yeah, that's the key, right? It's uh it's got to be something you like. Right, and it's not scary. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> excellent. But look, you're getting in front of people. You're um I can tell that this is this is something that still to this day requires some courage. Uh but it, I I feel that these things always start with courage. If you can take that first step, then um, you always create kind of a, a new normal every time because that's not new anymore. You've done it. And the second time you do it, it's still a little scary, but it's not, you're not in panic mode maybe. And you right. just keep moving, right? Right. I love it. I love it. Well, thank you so much for for sharing these stories with us, sharing what you're doing and, and getting out of your comfort zone to, to come uh, talk to us. I think this has been fantastic. Well, thanks for having me. The High Income Business Writing Podcast is a production of B2B Business Launcher. Learn more at b2blauncher.com.